Let's see how this plays out. Ooh, I'm going for some religion. I'm building that right away. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've never had a sieve where I had this option before. So this, I know, will give me a composite bowman. So give me a tech boost right away. Map's useless. Gold's useless early. Population could be very useful. So one limitation as well is that if I take something from a, a ruins, you know, I keep calling them huts just because old sieve, you can't take the same thing with this power from a hut until two other huts have gone by. So once I take culture, until I take two more huts, I can't take culture again. I think I do want to rush the culture rather than the technology, at least in the immediate part of the game. So now I'm going to get that relatively quickly and hopefully I can use it to my advantage. I chose culture with my first hut, which will get me very close to adopting something immediately. And I already have another hut. It's kind of cool to be the Shoshone. Now let's see. I pretty much want to min-max this. Now I know when I do this in the end I'll get a composite bowman, but it's too soon for that. I'm not going to attack Scott right away. And I can't take... looks like I, there's some tied things. So I took culture before, and now I can't take culture again on the next hut. But I also can't take religion, which is a little annoying because I actually would have taken the faith one next to just blitz that. So I gotta find as many of these ruins as I can. I'm gonna take a technology because my technology is not progressing that quick. And this will basically save me like six to ten turns worth of sciencing. Oh man, me. mining. This power is pretty good. Actually. So speaking of which, I want to build something next to this, but the edge of the map is annoying for in terms of building cities. But it looks like if I build something like right here, I guess here is better. Wellington's in the way, so the city's going to get squished regardless. But once I scout up here a little bit, if I can get stone and dyes, up here will actually be a pretty good place to put a city, and I can use that to push religion too. Well, if that's the edge of the map, this is not the great city I had originally thought it would be. It means I really gotta explore down here quick. Two civilizations, four city-states, tiny map. I'm not gonna build more than three or four cities tops. So I think I am going to go with this to get the culture immediately. Because I cannot underestimate Scott now that he knows how to play. I'm not going to hold anything back. Ignoring the barbarians for the time being to get as many huts as possible. This map cannot be that big forcing myself this way because if there are huts down here I can swing back around and collect them later at my leisure my goal is to deny huts to Scott oh look a barbarian he can't do anything because I don't even have workers so uh sure barbarian go nuts but more importantly everything's coming up Millhouse so can I get to this in one turn yes so if I really wanted to be clever, I could have a look at the maps and then reload the game. And you know what? I'm not going to underestimate Scott, so I'm gonna. So what did that reveal? That map was stupid. So, oh, that's the edge of the map. So Scott must be, like, right over here somewhere. It's like the whole map. All right, so the map's useless. I don't need the gold out right away. I don't care about the Berber and camps. So I could either get my population up, which could be a pretty decent boost right now. So if I do that, look, I'll be at three population already. 
Which actually ain't bad, because then I can do something like... Well, I don't have any more good places. I can do something like that. Which wouldn't be too bad, because look, it'll take me seven turns otherwise to get up to a three population. Well, before I choose that, see if I can find Scott. He's not really explored much, apparently. Ooh, more barbarians. Scott's got to be, like, right over there. Now, note, I can also adopt a policy. Now, I can either go here, which would be useful. Not immediately. I mean, I can take out the barbarian quicker once I get a... Uh, garrison which I won't have right away but then it gets me here and that'll actually be a pretty big deal as would then this stuff or I can jump here and then back and forth between these two for the time being honor would be useful because fighting those barbarians and then getting one I'll get culture from them which will just be even more culture boost and two if I have a bonus against the barbarians will actually mean these scouts these pathfinders could probably take some barbarians out I don't know how many more huts there are, so I might let this guy upgrade rather than take... Yeah, because if I find another hut with the guy in the bottom, then I can use him to get culture again. So I think I might just take the super powerful military unit early game, and that might cause a problem for Scott, which will be great. I'll get another culture thing pretty quick. I think I'm going to go after the barbarians now. All in all, a pretty good turn on this tiny map. Oh look, the barbarians have moved in range to attack nothing. Let's get out of Prague's way. That's the edge of the map down there, so I actually want to thread up this way. Ooh, more barbarians. Barbarians everywhere. Let's keep moving so I can see more. Oh, if I move, I can't shoot. Because I'm next to a barbarian. That's something that's easy to forget, but basically when there's hostile units sharing hexes adjacent to you it basically prevents you from having full movement so it's very different from say advanced wars where you can just sort of move guys past or fire emblem where you can just move guys wherever the hell you want uh zones of control like guys can really hold an area effectively Got more barbarians i'm gonna actually let this guy finish off these barbarians before i do anything so see i can attack instead of moving and that is fine All right, I should be able to finish this guy off here before the worker finishes. And the worker can probably just come in here, make wheat really quick, and then maybe come right over here and mine, and then come up here in plantation, and I'll build one more military unit in the interim. This barbarian, not a threat because I haven't built anything. Ruin I'll explore in a second, but first let's claim some gold. And let's keep searching out Scott. Scott's gotta be... He's either, like, down here somewhere, and I just didn't explore, and this comes down, or he's gotta be, like, right here. So let's try to come in there and menace him. Huh. I wonder if, because I took culture, I can't take faith now. Oh, well, let's see. I don't need gold, really. Uh, maps are useless on this tiny map. That's also useless. That would be okay. That would give me a boost. But I'd rather, again, just really push culture. Nice. I'll get one next turn. Oh, and I can move as well. If that's the bottom of the map, then I should go up. Barbarians continue to threaten. 
the city can take him out for the time being. That's the edge of the map. Oh, another barbarian. Scott's got to be up here somewhere. Where the hell is he? Either there's some land I don't know about in here. Ooh, I did not know that I got culture for killing barbarians with cities. That's interesting. He's got to be like right in here. We're hidden up here somewhere. I'm going to need a troop back here to deal with this. These barbarians are starting to be a problem because this worker is going to have to thread a fine line of working on stuff. Uh, but I want to build a settler. I might, as much as I want to harass Scott, I might send this guy back around. We'll see. Might have money to buy soon. Yeah, it'd only be 220 to build another one of these guys, and that's enough to hold off barbarians for a while. So I feel like... Yeah, I'll let my city make gold again instead of what it was doing before. It's now very important. What do I do here? It's a small game. Now, I want to min-max. Now, it's too early to go after these. I'm actually way ahead on culture than I would normally possibly be able to be. So, in a small game like this, I actually kind of want to go for patronage to get all the city-states on my side and leverage the hell out of them. Commerce will not be that useful. I couldn't fill it out in time, unless this game goes way long somehow. Uh, honor will be useful if I go after a war. So, pretty much, it's these three are the ones I'm going to go for. Patronage, honor, or tradition. I think... I actually want to max out tradition first. There's no danger of a war anytime soon. Scott's too far away. So I'm not going to build a wander right away. So I can hold off on that. And while this is not that useful immediately, it'll allow me to fight off barbarians more readily and protect my guys here. More importantly, I can quickly get here for my culture buildings to keep this culture blitz going. And then I can immediately go here or here as I see fit. So I'm going to rush this tradition tree.